love him or hate him, the recent mugshot of former President Donald Trump is an instantly iconic photograph in U.S. history, which got me thinking, what are the most iconic presidential photos? Here are my top 10. I'm Bob Summers, and this is a presidential story. Before we get started, here's a quick rundown of the criteria I used to create this list. First, it must be a photograph, not a painting. Second, the photo must have been taken when the subject was president. Third, I did not include portrait photographs. And finally, the president can only appear once on the list. Let's get started with number 10. Franklin Roosevelt with Winston Churchill and Joseph Stalin at the Yalta Conference. The big three met in the Crimean town of Yalta from February 4th through the 11th to discuss what the reorganization of Germany and Europe would look like after the end of World War II. In addition to the significance of the meeting between these three historical figures, the image shows the physical toll the war had taken on President Roosevelt. Two months after this photo, Roosevelt had a cerebral hemorrhage and died. The image of him sitting wearing a cape, or technically a naval boat cloak, became so quintessentially FDR, the Franklin Roosevelt Memorial in Washington, D.C. used it as the basis for his statue, minus the cigarette. At number nine, President Carter shaking hands with Egyptian President Anwar Sadat and Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin at the signing of the Egyptian-Israeli Peace Treaty on the grounds of the White House. After 13 days of tense negotiations at Camp David in September 1979, Sadat and Begin agreed to a framework for peace between their countries, for which they were awarded the 1978 Nobel Peace Prize. Six months later, they signed the resulting peace treaty, which is when this handshake took place. Carter would not earn his Nobel Peace Prize until 2002. Number eight takes us back to the Civil War, President Lincoln visiting troops after the Battle of Antietam. Before this time, and for quite a while afterwards as well, photos taken outside of a studio were rare. Along with his bodyguard, Major Alan Pinkerton on the left, founder of the Pinkerton Detective Agency, and Major General John A. McClernand, Lincoln was visiting the Union camp at Sharpsburg, Maryland, a few weeks after the Battle of Antietam, the bloodiest day in American history, with over 22,000 casualties. This photo, taken by Alexander Gardner, shows Lincoln's extreme height and his iconic stovepipe hat. Pinkerton, as Lincoln's bodyguard, must have been thinking, come on, man, you are already the tallest guy here. Why would you want to wear that hat and make yourself a bigger target? In the number seven spot, President Obama has his head rubbed by five-year-old Jacob Philadelphia. Jacob's father, Carlton, was leaving the White House staff. But before he left, he asked for a family photo with the president, which was not unusual. Once there, Jacob had a question for Obama. I want to know if my hair is just like yours, he asked. The president leaned over and invited Jacob to touch it. Jacob hesitated. Touch it, dude, Obama said. At that moment, White House photographer Pete Souza took the photo. The verdict, according to Jacob, yes, it does feel the same. And now, a whole generation of African-American children can see themselves as president one day. At number six, we have a photo taken moments before President Reagan was shot by John Hinckley Jr. in front of the Hilton Hotel in Washington, D.C. There are other photos from that day, including the moment Reagan is shoved into the limousine and the aftermath, but I chose this one because not only does it have Reagan in it, but the other three who were also wounded that day. Press Secretary James Brady, Policeman Thomas Delahanty, and Secret Service agent Timothy McCarthy. The photo depicts a normal moment with the anticipation of the horror we know will follow. Number five is a photo of President Kennedy, seemingly bearing the weight of the presidency on his shoulders. Taken by New York Times photographer George Thames a few weeks after Kennedy's inauguration, this was actually Kennedy in a free moment catching up on some reading that was on the table while waiting for the French ambassador. There were many photos of Kennedy with his children or of his assassination that are also iconic, but this one, titled Loneliest Job, captures a powerful feeling of the presidential office, even if that was not the intent. 
It is such an iconic photo that it was even recreated by actor Martin Sheen for the TV show The West Wing. Coming in at number four is an underdog story. President Truman holding a newspaper with the erroneous headline, Dewey Defeats Truman. Truman was expected to lose the election of 1948, so the Chicago Daily Tribune printed the November 3rd headline declaring Truman's opponent, Thomas E. Dewey, the winner. The Tribune didn't care much for Truman, once calling him a nincompoop, so perhaps this was wishful thinking. In total, 150,000 copies were published with this wrong headline before the second edition went out with something different. When Truman made a stop at St. Louis Union Station two days after the election, he was very happy to hold up the incorrect headline. That ain't the way I heard it, Truman said. Number three is President Bush learning that a second plane had hit the second World Trade Center tower. Bush had learned of the first plane crash before entering a classroom at Emma E. Booker Elementary School in Sarasota, Florida. So when White House Chief of Staff Andrew Card approached the president, he whispered a very succinct message. A second plane hit the second tower. America is under attack. An alternative photo for this spot on the list could have been Bush standing atop the New York rubble with bullhorn in hand. But this image, with the steely eyes and pursed lips of anger, and with the reassuring calmness required in front of the children in the foreground, embodies an emotional dichotomy many parents had to navigate on that terrible day. At number two, after resigning the presidency, President Nixon waves farewell before boarding Marine One. The Watergate scandal had taken a toll on the country for two years, and as more revelations came to light, an incriminating path kept leading to the president's door. Eventually, Nixon knew he would not survive. On the evening of August 8th, Nixon announced in a national televised broadcast that he would resign effective at noon the next day. On the 9th, he boarded Marine One to head home, but before he entered, he turned, smiled, and waved his outstretched hands in his trademark V for Victory salute. By the time he landed at his home in San Clemente, California, President Ford had taken the oath of office. Nixon was an ordinary citizen, and the United States presidency would continue on. Number one on the list is the swearing-in of President Lyndon Johnson aboard Air Force One at Dallas's Love Field after President Kennedy's assassination. There were many heartbreaking and tragic images around the assassination of President Kennedy, from Jackie crawling on the trunk of the moving limousine to John John saluting his father's casket as it passed by to the killing of Lee Harvey Oswald on live television. But the photographic power of this presidential moment is unparalleled. First, with so many people in the cabin, Johnson is forced to raise his right hand close to his body. Normally, Johnson was a larger-than-life character with a big personality. But this arm position makes him look appropriately small compared to the historic moment. Second, Jackie Kennedy is standing right next to Johnson, taking equal focus in the picture. Jackie refused to change her blood-soaked clothes because she wanted them, quote, to see what they had done to Jack. So knowing that the evidence of the day's horror is on the clothes of his predecessor's widow, as Johnson takes the presidential oath, is an unimaginable feeling to contemplate. Third, understandably, no one is smiling. But not just not smiling. One can feel the tremendous sadness in the moment coming through the photo, starting with Jackie's expression to the sadness in Lady Bird Johnson's eyes. The grief is palpable. And for these reasons, for me, this is the most iconic presidential photo. What did you think of the list? Did I miss anything? Would you have changed the order? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you like this iconic video, Please help out the channel, like and subscribe, and please visit the iconic to learn more interesting facts about the presidents.